centurion would tell you, look, I can tell you about Jesus. My servant was sick almost at the point of death, and I sent word to him to help him, and he did. Jairus, moved the synagogue, would tell you. I found out Jesus was in our vicinity, and when I found out, I went to him, and I told him about my daughter. My daughter's alive today. Why? Jesus won't break them. Bruised readers, punch a smoke of flax. He doesn't make any difference who it is. If your heart is broken because you've been so sluggardly in the kingdom of God, you've been so slow, Jesus called it a slow of heart. It takes you too long to catch on to God dealing with you. That's a bruised reader, smoke of flax. That's what that is. Jesus won't break it if you just get into his presence. <laughs> Get some get around somebody that knows who he is. And he'll do it. Revive you. Identify you. The Lord Jesus Christ is a mediator of a new covenant. It's a new and a better covenant. Established about better promises. Now, he's a different kind of mediator. The mediator, Moses was a mediator, but he was trying to like keep the wrath from coming on the people. All right? But God says, stand back! Stand back! I'm going to burn <laughs> these people up. I'll make you a great nation. <laughs> Some of these TV preachers would have said, boy, at last, I'm, I'm going to get it now. <coughs> Moses did. He stood up and pled for the people. That's the kind of mediator he was. Now let me be clear about this. That's not the kind of mediator Jesus is. He's reconciled us to God. There is an enemy. If you're in Christ, you're not an enemy anymore. You don't need someone to speak for you like you're an enemy. What the mediator Jesus does, he gets the benefits of the covenant, the things God has promised, he gets them from heaven to you. There's things James said are good and perfect gifts that come down from above. Who brings them down? How do they get down here? You call them down yourself? That's the mediator. The mediator sends these promises <coughs> down to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, the one true oil of blessing. Now this is a wonderful, I'm talking about the real Jesus now. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians said in 2 Corinthians 11 4 that they have been following another Jesus. Another Jesus. I'm talking about the real Jesus here, not another Jesus. This Jesus, according to Jude, which was his, one of his half brothers, Jude 1 24, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Now there's a lot of people in the age here like myself. That's a piece of good news, isn't it? Amen. <coughs> you wondering about whether you're going to fall or not? Maybe there was a time when you did fall. This is the Jesus. The Jesus John Hill served. Jesus, by the grace of God, I serve. And Jesus, you can serve him too. If you do what he said, you forsake all, pick up your cross, you can serve him too. Amen. He will keep you from falling. Now, I used to be part of the people that said, they say, what do you folk believe? So we believe you can fall away. They say, well, you know, they say, God, any other thing you can fall away, there's something else here. Now I like to say, we believe that Jesus can keep you from falling. Amen. Now you have to be close enough to be kept. You have to be in the room, so to speak, to be kept. You know, the Lambert's Cafe is a Cafe is a throw and roll. They throw rolls to you. But Jesus doesn't throw blessings to you. He gives them to you firsthand. And if you don't want to fall, and you are willing to pay the price, which is stick with the Son, abide in Christ, stay with Him, whatever it costs. When some competing interest rises up, stay with Christ. And if you do, He'll keep you from falling. I can prove this to you in the scripture. When Jesus was here upon earth, he gathered to himself 12 men. Remember this? That they should be with him and that he should send forth the priest. 
And all during his ministry, <coughs> nobody persecuted those 12 disciples. Nobody arrested any of them. Am I right? You know your Bibles? You're about right. No <coughs> one arrested them. Amen. No one persecuted them. They encountered people that had demons, demons that caused people to fall on the ground, slobber, and riot around in pain, jump in fire, jump in water, lost their hearing, lost their vision, lost their speech, but none of them ever did that to any of Jesus' disciples. Why didn't they? Well, in his final prayer to the Father, John 17, he said, because he kept them. He said, I have kept them. Nobody could touch him. <clears throat> he went back to heaven, of course. They had to arm himself for warfare, but he's keeping from heaven now. You're afraid to launch off of Jesus, maybe you're afraid things might happen that you don't want to happen. Listen, he can keep you from falling. Romans 14, Paul dealt with some people that were being critical of one another. Some of them were advanced in the faith, some were not. And so here's what he said. He said, if the person who's weak in the faith, weak in the faith doesn't mean he slipped and committed adultery. That's not what it means. It means he didn't understand. His understanding was deficient. He didn't know how to conduct himself under certain circumstances. In Romans 14, he says, God is able to make him stand. Amen. Hmm. That's a piece of good news. This is the Jesus that we're talking about. This kind of Jesus can make him stand. Let me give you one more. The Lord Jesus Christ, you do not need anything else. Colossians 2.10 says, you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. There is no resource you require that Jesus doesn't have and that can't be experienced and realized in Christ. None. You're complete in him. I'm sure you know this, but let me remind you. The main thing is to get through the world. Everyone's going to end up dying. The main thing is to arrive safely at the grave, so to speak. So that when you come to the time when you're going to exit the battlefield, yeah. <coughs> you know, see, when you know this, it's good to know someone can make you stand. Someone keep you from falling. God is so intense about this that he has sent the Holy Spirit into the hearts of people that are his sons. And Romans, and the Holy Spirit is technically working for Jesus. He's called the Spirit of Christ. He's working for Jesus. Jesus, I will send, I'll send him. I'll send him to you. So the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us when we don't know what to pray for as we are. He makes intercession for us in groanings that can't be uttered by men that can't be. Even in a foreign language, they can. It can't be uttered. You probably survived a lot of days if you're in Christ because of this interceding. The Holy Spirit intercedes, so you get what you need when you need it, even though you may not know it. That's the Jesus we're talking about. Able to keep from falling, able to make you stand, mediator, bringing all the benefits of God to you. You remember on one occasion, there were two people, Cleopas was the name of one, we don't know what the name of the other was. They were traveling from Jerusalem back to Emmaus. Jesus had died, the bottom had fallen out. They thought everything was all over. They were talking about the events that had taken place that weekend, which included the crucifixion of Christ. And Jesus himself, risen from the dead, this is still on the first day of the week. It's like this took place the same day Jesus rose from the dead. He joined these two people. And he said to them, what is this that you're talking about together as you walk by the way on a sand? Well, Cleopas said, well, it's obvious we're not from around here. He told them what had happened. He said this, he said, we thought this Jesus was the one. We thought he was the one. 